So today I wanted to show you a little bit about how to create shapes, how to edit those shapes, how to use the rotate tool, and then finally we'll do a bit of a project to create some patterns. So we'll start over here with our shape tool. I'll mostly be using the ellipse tool today and I'm going to create a few ellipses across my artboard and then edit them using the direct selection tool and my anchor point tool and pen tool. So here we go. I like to hold down shift when I'm creating my ellipses just to keep them constrained. Now I'm going to come in with my direct selection tool and on this first ellipse I'm going to just nudge these points up and down with my arrow keys or you can drag them, that's up to you. And then I'm going to use my anchor point tool to remove the handles on the top and bottom. And I might just um, resize this a little bit to make it a slightly slimmer shape. I might make a teardrop shape now, I'm holding down shift again. Now with my anchor point tool, I'm going to remove the handles here, draw around it with my direct selection tool and again using my, my arrow keys to nudge that top point up. So that's good. I'm actually going to use my option key and drag and drop a second instance of this shape and just make it a slimmer version. Might also move this point up a little bit just to change it slightly. And actually I might make another one with a teardrop. I'm just going to drag this over. Now using my anchor point tool here, I'm going to make this um, pointy. Maybe bring it up a touch. All right, so I've got a few different shapes to play with there. So I'm going to, again, hold down my Option key as I click and drag. The other way you could do this is click Command-C, Command-V to give yourself a second instance of it. So there's a few different ways you can do that. Now, again, I really like to do the um, Option key and drag, so I just find it's a really um, quick way to give myself extra shapes. Now with both of them selected and I just used my selection tool to drag a box around them, I'm going to Command C to copy them and Command F to paste in front. Now I actually have four shapes sitting here, two behind and two in front, and with the two that I just pasted on top, I'm going to hold down Shift and see how I have this little arrow, pointy arrow on each other end. This is my rotate. I can rotate these two now. Holding down shift will keep it to a 45 degree or 90 degree angle. I'm going to click and drop. And now I've got this sort of interesting shape here that I quite like. With these all selected, I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool now to unite it as a shape. So I've got my Pathfinder panel here. I'll just close it for now so I can show you where to find it. It's under Window, Pathfinder. And this is the function I'll use today, Unite. And you can see now I just have a path that goes around the outside of the shape rather than the four individual shapes I had before. So I have this shape. It's got a black fill and no stroke. Now what I'd like to do is come up to Object, Path, Offset Path. And you see I've got a little dialog box that comes up here. I'm going to preview this just so we can sort of see. What Offset Path does is it actually makes a new shape that follows this same path, but rather than it just copying out so this is quite pointy, it actually takes it out at the exact same ratio, which can be really useful. So I've got it offset at seven millimeters at the moment. I'm going to take this down. I might make it four millimeters and see how that looks. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that, so OK. Now, you can't see my shape behind because this one that I've just done with the offset path is sitting on top. But what I'll do is I might just switch that around so it's just a stroke. What I'd like to do with this shape is I'd actually like to make this a dotted line. There's actually quite a handy way you can do that over in your stroke panel under Window Stroke. I'll bring this over so you can see. So you change the cap to a rounded cap and you up the weight a bit or you, depending on what size um, dashes you want. Click on this, the dashed line. Now this is already looking pretty good because I was mucking around with it before, but you can play with this. So I'll, I'll just go with a um, 0 0.5 point dash and a 10 point gap, but you can play with those. You can also change what the next dash would be. You could make it a longer dash and a shorter or longer gap. And I'm going to change this, align the dash to the corners there, and it just gives me some really interesting shapes. And this next one I'll show you will create using the rotate tool. Hold down option, and I'm just going to drag a new instance over here onto my page. So there's a few different ways to rotate. When you've got your selection tool, you can just rotate with the bounding box. That's one way to rotate. The other way is you can right mouse button click and transform 
rotate and this will bring up your rotate box and you can type in the angle you want to change it to. You can click OK and that will just rotate just that instance or you can press copy and it will copy a new instance of the rotated shape around. But what I'm going to do today is actually use this rotate tool over here in my tools panel. And the reason I'm going to do that is like it comes up with this target here. Now you see if I click and drag my shape moves around that target point. If I move this target point then my shape will move around that. I can move it down here and rotate around that. I could put it on this point up here and again move around theirs. And the way that I like to use it is I hold down option and click and you'll see it moves this anchor to where I want it to be but it also at the same time because I've clicked with option it comes up with my rotate panel. Because I'm going to be moving this shape around in a circle what I can actually type in here is 360 which means in this case 360 degrees and divide it by how many shapes I'd like to have in that circle. So for this example I might choose 8 so I've got 360 divided by 8 and I'm going to click copy and you'll see now I've got my original shape that I was rotating from and the copy which the computer has worked out the maths for me and it's moved it so I will fit 8 within a 360 degree radius. Now the great thing from here is I can actually use command D which will copy this shape command D, command D, command D, command D and you can see now I have eight of these shapes and they've all rotated around this same point. So I'll show you that again um, using um, another shape. I might put a circle in here. And again, so I've got my rotate tool and in the center of this shape, I'm going to hold down option and click and it comes up with my dialog box. And you can see here, it's already showing me where it would put the next circle. And so it's 45 degrees because it had worked out that angle from when I typed in 360 divided by eight. And again, I'm going to click copy and you'll see I've got my original circle and my copy and I'll go command D. I might actually select these shapes I've got here and hit command C and command F to paste in front and holding down my shift and option key at the same time I'm going to just shrink them down a little bit and might make them white just to sort of give us another interesting shape make this whole thing a little bit smaller and we'll, we'll work on another one um, and this time we will use this shape. I'm going to click and hold my option and drag that again. We're going to work on that same rotate. So with my rotate tool holding down option, this time I might just pop uh, click here. And this time I'm going to type in 360, but I'm going to divide it by 12. And again, copy. So I can go with my command D and put my 12 shapes in there and I've got another kind of beautiful shape and with that highlighted I quite like these interesting lines in here so what I've decided to do is instead of just having them with a black fill I'm actually going to make it so it broke instead and I might just do one more I use this shape we created here I'm going to click and drag again I'll use the rotate tool over here and so option I'll rotate it around this central point and this time I will make it 360 divided by 5 and copy. So again I'm going to command D you see it's just put some lovely shapes in there. I might make this a little bit smaller because it's quite big. So to do that evenly I hold down shift and option at the same time and I'll drag that in and I might command copy and command F and I might just spin this around and I might make that one with a stroke. Now I'm going to work on making them into an interesting pattern. I might move on to a different artboard. So to do that I've got my artboard panel here but if you need to find it it's up in window artboards and I'm going to click this new artboard and I've got a new artboard over here. 
So I might speed this bit up because I'll just be playing with these shapes that I've made. Um, this again is something that you can make as complex or as simple as you like. You could add in colour, you could add in more shapes or less shapes or some little details in between the shapes or move them out a little bit further so they've got some more space to breathe. We'll see what this looks like. Um, and the great thing is with Shape Builder is once you've started you can still edit it as well. I'm going to come up here to Object, Path, Outline Stroke and I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller just so I can see what I'm working on. Come in here. Now I've purposefully left a few blank spots in here and you'll see why in a minute because I'd like to fill those up when I can actually see the preview of the pattern that I'm working on. So with these selected up to object pattern make and now you can see here it's the, um, the pattern that we're creating. I'll just move some of these panels out of the way. So I have my original mandalas I've work, been working on there and you can see the repeat around them as the preview. So I can work with this in here, I can move things around um, until I get an option that I like. I can also do things like changing the colours, so at this point if I wanted to you know, add in something a little bit different I could. And you know, these ones might be red. But the thing is that um, what's great is you get that preview as you're working. So I might just move red and black theme. And now I can see in my preview that some of these overlap and I don't want them to. So I'm actually going to move things around a little bit just to adjust. And you'll see as I move them, it will adjust the rest of the pattern. I might actually group that at this point so it's easier to move around. Move this. So you can see here, I've got up in here the pattern swatch that I'm working on. I can save a copy, I can click when I'm done or I can cancel. So what I'm going to do is save a copy and I'm, this will save it up into my swatches panel. So I'm going to call this um, red and black pattern one. Okay. So it's just letting me know, it's put it up in the swatches panel for me. Now I can click back here and go back to my artboard. So I've still got my original shapes over here that I was working on before, um, but what's really cool, I'll just move them off this artboard. I'm going to draw a rectangle and now I can show you the pattern that I created which is up here in my swatches panel. I can select and it gives me that as a pattern. So I hope you really enjoyed working with some shapes, having a play with the rotate tool and learning a little bit about how to make patterns.